All right, guys. We have got something exciting going on today. At least I think it's exciting. And first off, welcome back. What we're doing today is we're going to fight back against that darkness. You guys know the darkness that I'm talking about, the five o'clock darkness. I hate being out here trying to do stuff and then it gets dark on me when I have barely any time as it is. I'm going to put up some lights today. So guys, what you saw me just put down is my solution to that darkness and I hate it because I want to get outside and enjoy myself and do things and just like the rest of you, I got a to-do list a mile long, but when it gets dark at five o'clock in November, December and well, it gets a little bit lighter out later as we get into January and February, but not much. Well, I start to get really frustrated and so I'm going to fight back against that darkness, as I mentioned, and I'm going to use some lights. These are some basic LED 12 volt lights and I'm going to hook up a lighting system in this place. Now I've used these lights before and they're, they work pretty slick. They don't draw a lot of energy and you can use just about any type of 12 volt battery to power them. I'm going to go one step further though today. I'm not only going to power those with 12 volt battery, but I'm going to use a solar panel to actually charge my battery so that when I'm not out here and when we finally do get some sun, it will keep that battery charged up. So when I get out here, I just flick on the lights and away I go. Without this, well, obviously I'm gonna have to take the battery back and forth between my shop and my house and out here. And I don't wanna be doing that all the time. Therefore, solar panel, just a cheap Canadian tire Coleman brand. But if we have a look at it, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's a 40 watt unit and uh, it's gonna provide plenty of juice because this is the exact same setup I've got at my tiny house. Anyways, glad you guys are all here and let's see how this goes. Okay, well, here's what I'm thinking, all right? I just laid out the lights there and to be honest with you this is one string of lights that i just purchased that is the leftovers from the tiny house this whole length here is going to pretty much be covered by this set of string lights so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to use these pieces of wood here i'm going to secure the lights to the pieces of wood and then i'm going to screw, screw everything to the rafters and then run some wiring over to a switch which i'll probably put in this area and then we'll get a battery and go from there
I think while I'm here, I'm also going to put a little bit of a shelf here. It might be a makeshift workbench. It's definitely not going to be the same as the old one I had. But as you guys saw, I rarely used it. I'm just going to put a little platform here so I can put tools on. And I've got the wire here that goes to the lights. I'll probably end up putting the switch somewhere around this wall here. And then I'll put the battery down on the floor. And from there, we'll try to get our solar panel out here somewhere. I don't know where that's going to go, but let's get the shelves in place. Ran out of nails. Good enough. Okay. Don't laugh. I'm getting low on nails and screws and I want to get this done tonight. The sun's going down, right? Got to be resourceful. Okay, well I can tell you, that's never coming apart once that sets. Let's, uh, let's get the plywood on here. Look at that, beautiful brown. Okay, I think I got a few screws left. Here they are. Oh, for gosh. Got that adhesive on me. Back to the electrical.
All right, guys. Well, we are getting down near the end of the day here, so I will be able to show you these lights in action. As you guys can see behind me, these are nothing more than simple LED lights. And if we look, they are sort of positioned in line with the angle of the roof. So they are going to, they're sort of positioned like this. So they're going to broadcast light, not only downwards, but out a little bit, which is good. I've got lights all the way from this end of the sawmill, pretty near down to that end. These went up pretty easily. You guys can see the screws, see the screws that are sort of holding each light up. Right, so nothing too complicated there. And then I put that piece of wood there just to give something to uh, something to screw to. That is hooked up to the wiring down here. And right along the top of that piece of wood there is the wire. I've got it stapled down. And that wire comes down this way. You guys can see it here. Comes down this way. Ultimately comes down and to the battery. This is just a 12 volt lawnmower battery. Some uh, fancy things I got going on here is this thing. This is a uh, control module for the solar panel. And if we step outside here, and if you guys look up over my head there, you guys see way up there? That's my solar panel. So that's a 40 watt solar panel. Uh, you can buy that anywhere. I'm sure this came from Canadian Tire. That solar panel, I had a bit of a, bit of a tough time figuring out where to position it. I'm in the middle of the woods, so I don't exactly have really good coverage for sun. But that's about the best I could do. Ideally, if you position it south, you get the maximum amount of sunlight in a day. For me, I got to be careful because I can't really point it upwards because the snow is about to fall and then it'll be covered. So I want to keep it vertical so the snow doesn't stick to it. Even though it probably still will because we get a lot of blowing snow. But regardless, that's probably the best setup. That solar panel runs on a wire. And if we look here, you guys see a black wire up there? It just sort of cuts across underneath the roof. And I'll probably still secure that a little better. But uh, the black wire here comes down and to this control module right there. And you guys can see the lights here on the left, green for charged in the middle, yellow for charging, which we're doing currently, and red for low voltage. These little clips here, these are connected to this control module and hence that's what's gonna charge the battery. My goal is to not have to take this battery to somewhere with electricity to charge it. My goal is to allow that solar panel to do that and that when I need the power, it's available for my lights. We'll see if that works. I'm pretty sure it will. Uh, this is definitely not taking very much uh, energy to power these lights here. Now, in terms of the connections here, you guys are going to notice I simply just connected the wire by hand. I don't have anything sort of fixing it together. I'm going to change that. I've got some heat shrink tube on order and I'll permanently make those connections once that gets here. But for now, I think we'll wait an hour or two because we all know the sun's on its way down and we'll come out here and we'll try it because I don't exactly know what this is going to look like, but I sure hope that is sufficient lighting. And if it's not, well, I guess I just add more. Anyways, let's come back. And one last thing before we head out of here for an hour or so until it gets dark is the switch. I almost forgot about that. This little switch here, you can see typical on off switch. Uh, this switch, I just drilled the three quarter inch hole into the wood here that slides right into it. And if we look around back, the wire comes out and then obviously you have to connect that to the rest of your circuit. That switch, I've used that type many, many times. It's a cheap one off Amazon, but it works just fine. I wanted to have a switch so that I don't have to manually take the, uh, take the wires off the battery every single time. Although I tend to do that anyways, just for safety's sake. Uh, what I tend to do after I'm done milling, sometimes I just slip the terminal uh, slip the wire off the terminal so that we're not going to have any issues but regardless the switch is there so if uh, you know down the road you leave it hooked up you just turn it on and off with that well guys we're back it's dark and we're going to try this so let's head on in here and just so you guys can look around obviously i would not be out here saw milling right now if i didn't have any lights this is quite typical of this time of year and it's quite sad unfortunately i think we're at like five o'clock or so maybe 10 after five eastern time and uh anyways let's start it up and let's see what we got you guys saw the setup and here's the switch this will be the first time for me seeing it wow that that's something you guys see that that is a beautiful thing i tell you coming from a guy who was sawing wood in the dirt walking along a little goat path and had some sort of a log set up overhead this thing is like a palace you guys look around i can see everything in here these are some beautiful lights too, uh, bright as anything, but um, I think brighter is better in this case. Gives me nice light over the whole setup. I can see right down to the end and can see all the way back to the other end and I can even see my workbench. So 
One thing I like about this setup is with the slope on the rafters, it actually pushes the light out this way a little bit as opposed to straight down. And that allows me to see out to where my log bunks will be, which you guys should come back for because that's going to be happening very soon. Snow is yonder. Remember that word, yonder? Anyway, snow is upcoming and I got to get some log bunks in here and load it up with logs because if I don't do that soon, I'm going to be talking about sawing the rest of my life without actually doing anything. So I'm going to leave it at that for tonight. It is nice and chilly out. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. It's nice and chilly out, and I think snow's coming tomorrow. Guys, I appreciate you all watching. If you haven't done so already, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Check out this playlist, and I'll see you next time. <music>